This is lecture one of a series on how to construct and analyze a seven transistor amplitude modulation broadcast band receiver. This one I got off of eBay for $4.61. And this is what you get. You get a bag of parts, printed circuit board, uh, this little label, and I've already attached it, and then the enclosure, along with one page of instructions, all in Chinese. Okay, this is the schematic. Then on the back, there is the bottom side of the printed circuit board with symbols to show where the parts go, and the parts are soldered to the printed circuit board with the parts on the other side of the board what is called the silk screen side and I'll show you that down here is a color code for reading resistors and this is going to save your bacon and I'll show you why then the bill of materials which shows you the values for the resistors there's a ver uh, potentiometer which you will call a variable resistor but it's 5k and we're going to vary the tap point, then the capacitors values, then this is the ferrite rod, that is the antenna, then there are some transformers, diodes, uh, transistors, and a speaker, and then a bunch of hardware. Okay, I'm not uh, fluent in Chinese, but I've learned to read a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use this, but I have to do it uh, on the computer. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this series is we're going to take the parts and we're going to build one section at a time and we're going to look at what each section does. And by building it in this manner that I set up, you will be pretty much guaranteed a successful assembly. All right, so let me take the parts out of the bag and do this carefully so that you don't destroy any of them. And I'm just going to destroy the bag by cutting it here. And I will temporarily dump the parts out here on the table and get you some kind of contain container enclosure to put the parts in so that they don't uh, run away from home. So let me do all this. Okay. <clears throat> and if you want to, you can inventory the parts, but I don't do that because I have a lab full of parts that if something's missing, I can fix it. Okay. Oh, here's the inspection number. The, um, thank you, uh, inspector number eight. Okay. I'm going to show you this is this co this course or this lecture series is set up for beginners and experts alike, uh, and hopefully some of you will uh, get a bunch of kids together and you say, okay, we're all going to order one of these, and then when they get here, we're all going to meet once a week or every two days, whatever, um, set up a class or whatever, and you're going to help the kids learn elect electronics and they can build the robots of the future. All right, so we got the parts and we're ready to start assembling, but let me tell you there's some tools that you need. Of course, the soldering tools and you can go on uh, YouTube and look how to solder and everything. Okay, but I recommend a couple other things and I'm gonna do this on, on the computer, but this is a little kit, cost you around seven dollars, and it's a signal generator, audio signal generator. That uh, we're going to use it to uh, do some pretty neat things, I think. And uh, it's worth the six dollars here, because because you can use this for uh, other projects. All right. Uh, it would be nice if you could, uh, if you had a frequency counter and. You can get these off of eBay for around ten or fifteen dollars. Turns out the test equipment is going to cost you more than the uh, the kit itself. All right, and you need a 
multimeter to re read uh, resistances if you can't do the color code measure voltages because we're going to test some stuff uh, I know a bunch of you probably own the cheap Harbor Freight freebie meter but I recommend you go and spend twenty dollars or so and and get you a, a good meter all right okay the first thing we're going to do and I'll show you this is we're going to assemble the power section and uh, make sure that everything works <clears throat> we're going to install the uh, on and off switch fix up the battery and then we're going to install one resistor and two diodes all right on this printed circuit board the way this works the printed circuit board when you get everything installed on it is going to mount in this case there's a little holder there and then this mounts down and then there's a screw that goes in here to hold it down okay all right two AA batteries go in here and the the mechanism to hold them down is consists of a spring that fits in here like this okay and then there's two end connectors one with a one with a spring and one that is flat now since you've changed batteries in TV remotes and everything you know that there's a spring and then there's a flat piece like this that goes like so and this and if I got it right anyway this will go down there and then this the other one with the spring goes on this side so that the battery goes minus plus minus plus so this will give you three volts we need that and then there's some wire included in the kit that allows you to go from the uh, battery to the printed circuit board and it first first hook up where you will go and hook a long wire up here to the board so that you can have the board out here to to flip over put a part on this side flip it over solder the part down and it's kind of a pain so i'm going to do a little thing because i have one i have this little these nine volt battery clips okay but i also have a double a holder so that i can solder this to my board and then whenever i want to power it up i just do this instead of having to have it hooked up and you don't want to solder and unsolder wires to and from the battery um, testing okay so let's start first by going through uh, using the computer looking at the schematic and uh, what the steps we're going to do okay your radio kit comes with one sheet of documentation and let's study it I'm going to call page one the schematic as you see here and it looks fairly complicated but it's really not if you take some time to study it and that's what we're going to do and we'll break it down into parts let me just run it by quickly this is the antenna here signal is captured through the ferrite core into this transformer and the radio station signal is fed into the base of this transistor this transistor with an IF transformer forms an oscillator and a mixer and if you go and google for a super heterodyne receiver on the internet and look at the way it works you're going to have your station say you're listening to 920 kilohertz and your oscillator here is going to be 455 kilohertz higher you're going to get the sum and the difference the difference is going to be 455 the 455 signal well all the signals are fed into this transformer here and this is a bandpass filter and then that signal is fed into this amplifier filtered some more amplified some more filtered some more then demodulated 
okay this transistor is used like a diode detector the audio out is fed into this series resistor here with a volume control and this adjusts the volume fed through a capacitor through an audio amplifier fed through a transformer fed into a audio power amplifier which is a push-pull network fed into another transformer and finally to your speaker okay by the way this diagram has several errors in it the first major one is this part of the where the output audio transformer goes to the speaker it's actually two windings and it looks exactly like this the difference between these two transformers is the number of windings on the input and the output okay Look lower left hand corner. This says that this radio is well tuned from 525 to 1605 kHz. The IF transformer is 465 kHz. But I'm going to tune mine for 455 and see what it does. Then it says here if you get an electromagnetic field of 1.5 millivolts per meter on the input you should or if that field is less than that then the signal noise ratio is 26 dBs which is low uh, I believe human speech is at 40 or 60 dB uh, so this is not that loud but we'll check it out that this thing has a bandpass uh, around 9 kilohertz or so and depending upon which country you're in the bandwidths or channels for AM radio are either 10 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz so this will means you can receive audio up to 9 kilohertz it's not like your thousand dollar audio system but this is just a portable radio it takes 3 volts provided by two batteries consumes less than 20 milliamperes which means that the radio should run around 100 hours or more if you don't run it at high volume and the audio output is greater than 100 milliwatts and uh, I assume that this is t less than 10 percent uh, distortion okay over here the little X and I can't read Chinese but this little X you'll see on the schematic there's an X here an X here an X here and an X here Now what those are are gaps in the printed circuit board that you have to connect in order to get that part of the circuit to operate and the way this radio is designed you put everything together into the printed circuit board then you connect here and check to see if the current increases 3 to 5 milliamps from the power supply. It'll start off with 4 milliamps with no signal and go to 10 milliamps at maximum volume. And likewise here, no signal, 3 milliamps. We put a strong signal in, it'll go up to 5 milliamps. And this is shown on each stage. But I'm going to use a technique where I'm going to start building from the audio section back and test each one. Also the transformers are little metal cans and if you look at the top there's a tuning slug and there's a color. B2 is red. Okay. And I'll show you how I've determined that. B3 is yellow. B4 is white and then B5 is the one that's black. Now each one of these transformers has a you know is tuned for 455 to 465 kilohertz and they have different turn ratios because of the different impedances. Alright let's look at the back of the page. Back of the page has on the right hand side the bill of materials shows you what the parts values are for the resistors there's a 5k potentiometer that's your volume 
Then there's all the capacitors, C1 through C15. B1 is the antenna, and that's a ferrite rod covered with a, two windings. One of them, is, well, both of them are real fine wire, so be very careful here. B2, B3, B4, and B5 are the IF transformers. Once again, here's the color. Red, yellow, white, black. B6 and B7 are the audio transformers, okay? And they come, B6 is either a blue or a green. That's what these two symbols are here, blue or green. And B7 is either yellow or red. And in my kit, they came green and yellow. So make sure that you get them in the proper place, and we'll, we'll do that one, one point at a time. There's the diodes, there's the transistors, and there's a speaker. That's all there is to it. Now, let me show you how I learned the colors. In the lower left-hand side of this page is the color code for resistors. And I know the color code, and you can go on the web and look it up, but one is brown, two is red, three is orange, four is yellow, five is green, six is blue, seven is violet, eight is gray, nine is white, and zero is black. So that's how you learn Chinese. Also, on this page, let me go back to making it regular size. Down here shows you these little disc caps. They're labeled 223, and there's a bunch of them. If you look over here, the .022 microfarads, one, two, three, four, five of those, and shows that the way you read these numbers off of caps, it's 22 times 10 to whatever this number is, 10 to the third. That makes it 22,000 picofarads, or 22 nanofarads. Here's another print error. This should be 0 0.022 microfarads. It's labeled correctly over here. All right, another thing. Uh, here you can see the B1 is the ferrite rod and the antenna system. Down here is the power supply of the two AA batteries and the wires coming from the battery go to this ground or excuse me this pad here which is connected to the switch which is on the volume control and then the plus side goes to this little pad over here speaker is connected to these two pads on the lower left hand side this is the bottom side of the board okay here's the top side of the board you can see the four places where the IF transformers go red, yellow, black, white, B7, this is going to be your yellow transformer goes here, and then your green transformer goes here. Then all the other parts go in the other holes, but we're going to do them one at a time, so no problem. Your on and off control and the volume control is mounted on the top side of this board here. Now, let's go back to the, no, let me go, there's the bottom side of the board. Let's go back to the uh, diagram, and I'll, whoops, I have to go and, sorry, um, I don't have, wow, never mind. Let me go back to this diagram. Uh, we're going to, step one is going to be to hook up the power supply. So, I have a, I have a, let me kill all this stuff off here. Oh, in the previous part of this video when I was doing it with a camera, there's a signal generator that I recommend. This is the one that costs $6.60 from China. 
you can probably get it from Banggood, which may mean U.S. shipping. I don't know which part of the world you're in, but you might get it quicker. Uh, but w the specs on this device is it generates a frequency from 1 hertz to 1 megahertz. You can do a sine wave, a square wave, or a triangle wave. We're going to use the sine wave. Amplitude from 0 to 3 volts when you power this with a 9 volt battery. Okay. And the fact that it goes up to 1 megahertz, I'm going to use the fact that it can generate 465 kilohertz or 455 kilohertz to use it to align the IF section. And I've got a neat way to do that. Now let me get one other thing for you. And that is a off eBay. Here you go. This looks like this is what? Select color. Okay. You can do red. For ten dollars and eighty three cents you can get your frequency counter, which is uh something that comes in handy uh if you don't already have a frequency counter in your uh, test equipment. Okay. Going back to what we're going to do here, we're going to take and do, let me kill this off, kill this off, kill this off, let me get my, uh, step one is we're going to hook up the power supply. The way we do that is we install the volume control on off switch connect it to the battery then go around here and install the 220 ohm resistor which is going to be red red brown in color and then two diodes now what this part of the circuit does is of course power, power the whole thing but with the 220 ohm resistor in series with two diodes, you're going to get at this point about 1.4 volts. So we're going to build this part and power it on and measure it. And you'll say, well this seems stupid, why don't I just build a whole bunch of stuff at once? Nope. A lot of problems are caused by the power supply. D this does several things. One, ensure that you're paying attention. Two, that your batteries are good. And Three, you can solder and uh, measure some data. All right. Now, I have to do this course in a whole bunch of sections, so it's little pieces uh, at once. So, your homework is to do your research. If you don't already have a kit or whatever, order it. It'll come by slow boat, so it'll take about four to six weeks to get to you. Go ahead and order the signal generator, and then get all your other test equipment ready to go. Okay, end of part one. Okay, here's a digital photograph of the printed circuit board, the volume control and on-off switch, the potentiometer, the thumb wheel or the wheel that will be used to turn it on and then adjust the volume. This is the small brass screw with a Phillips head and you'll have to have a very small Phillips head screwdriver to attach this wheel to the potentiometer. Here's the two glass diodes and then here's the 220 ohm resistor. Red, red, brown and then uh, gold for precision. 
here are the parts installed you can see here the potentiometer and you'll note here this is a little I didn't see it before but this is a little extra solder that crept through from the PCB B side when I was soldering I'll just touch it with a iron and it'll go away here's the two diodes on the printed circuit board the banded in which is the cathode this is the anode in um, or make sure that the banded in of the diode is the lead goes into this printed circuit board hole where the where the band is on the symbol now the reason why I bent the leads with the band down is that these two leads I can attach or touch a voltmeter to and measure the voltage uh, if I have this diode in the reverse direction with the banded in up on this side then this will be grounded if you look excuse me as a D2 if the D2 is reversed then the wire lead up will be attached to ground and you'll read zero voltage so sometimes the part orientation the way you bend leads um, makes a difference so and I use a printed circuit board to uh, edge to bend these things and uh, if you look in my lab notebook you'll see how to do that here's the resistor R12 now the spacing between these two holes is too short to put a quarter watt resistor so I bend it this way and it's too far apart to have this thing come down vertically down powered up I measured that the two uh, double A's read 3.21 the anode end of D1 reads 1.43 this is the voltage across the two diodes to ground and I predicted before that it would be about 1.4 and that's what it is and the voltage drop across D2 is 0.715 but this meter doesn't read that <laughs> if these are equally uh, uh, electronic diodes one other thing let me show you on the uh, you will be using the batteries within the enclosure uh, one of the things you want to put the uh, speaker in place it locks in place with two plastic tabs and be careful not to break that if you do then if you have a hot glue gun or a piece of a piece a, a drop of epoxy can hold this down uh, it's not going to Mars so it's not a big deal but I did epoxy the wire uh, connector across here you can see the little shiny parts there where I put a little drop uh, there's a little tabs on these two uh, terminal parts here that when you push this down and do it very carefully watch out don't cut yourself uh, when you push this down it locks in place and you push it down till it encounters a, the stop in the plastic okay uh, here's what it looks like with the uh, batteries in place and going back going back to the previous installation of the speaker do it with the two terminals on this end so they're close to the printed circuit board so the wires can be short but with these two metal supports this way these two supports will also help to support the battery and keep it from uh, pressing uh, further down into the enclosure so that's it next lecture will be on installing the audio power amplifier